People trying to lose weight or control their diabetes can drink or not drink certain things to increase their chances of success. This is true even if they are attempting to practice intermittent fasting and or follow a keto or half keto, whatever the diet you're on, the drinks you consumed or consume can make or break your efforts to control your blood sugar or lose weight. Hello, you're watching Sugar MD channel. My name is Dr. Ahmed Ergin. I'm a diabetologist and a hormone specialist. Some beverages can help you to improve your metabolism, reduce insulin resistance, and lower insulin levels. We'll get to the best ones right now. We will also discuss what not to drink. Majority of people have heard the intermittent fasting, right? Even though it has received a lot of attention recently, intermittent fasting is not a new concept. Fasting has been practiced for a long time for a variety of reasons, including spiritual, health, or survival, etc. It is a way of eating that is usually associated with high-protein or ketogenic diets if those work for you. However, it raises a number of questions, particularly if you are unfamiliar with the concept of intermittent fasting. You may be wondering if you can drink coffee, water, or any other beverages during your fasting periods. It is possible to undermine the weight loss benefits of intermittent fasting if you consume any beverages containing carbohydrates, proteins, or even fats while you're fasting. You already know that intermittent fasting diets have been linked to lower insulin resistance and better sugar control, both of which may lower your risk of diabetes. If you consume a lot of liquid calories at a time when you should be fasting, these advantages may be quickly lost unless you are conducting a dry fast, which is uh, quite difficult on your body. Follow the steps that I'm going to talk in this video today. They are one of the most popular drinks that we are going to talk about today that you may want to drink while fasting. Whether or not they will cause you lose your fast, we'll talk about. Number one is coffee. Now, if you prefer it black, drink it black. Drink it that way. Coffee as you may have heard, also can raise the blood sugar if you have type 1 diabetes or if you are very insulin resistant. However, because black coffee contains no calories, it is permissible to consume during the fasting period. It is best not to add sugar, cream, or milk to your coffee because it will increase the caloric content, which will cause you to lose your fasting state. If you're doing keto instead of intermittent fasting, then you can add a little heavy cream. Add calorie-free cinnamon, guys. The spice flavoring to your coffee makes it taste a lot better if you don't want to add extra calories. Save the coffee add-ons when you're not on a fast. I am also occasionally asked about MCT oil. In general, depending on who you ask, this can be a little more contentious, at least, you know, open to interpretation. But adding fats to your coffee, including MCT oil, according to strict fasting rules, yes, it breaks your fast. I recommend high quality MCT though for people who follow intermittent fasting programs on a regular basis, especially if their goal is to keep blood glucose low and give the body time to rest and digest. Fats don't have as much impact on your fast as carbohydrates or protein do as long as you don't overdo it. This is true if your goal is to improve your overall insulin sensitivity, as long as you don't overeat. Because at the end of the day, calories are calories. They add up quickly if you don't pay attention. One gram of fat, for example, contains nine calories, while one gram of carbohydrate contains four calories. Now, consuming too many carbohydrates can lead to insulin resistance, and it's a lot easier to consume too much compared to fats, and that will lead to insulin resistance. The fat in the solid foods keep you full longer, for example, but drinking calories make you less likely to notice or feel full. The fat in solid foods keep you full longer, but drinking calories make you less likely to, to notice that fullness. People who drink coffee with MCT oil claim also that they have better morning concentration because of the medium chain fats that are found in MCT oil and they are quickly converted into ketones, which is an alternative source of energy for your brain. 
MCT oil is available in health food stores and of course on the internet. If you are fasting, I would suggest limiting yourself to one cup of coffee per day and if possible drink decaf coffee. Caffeine, especially when consumed on an empty stomach, can make you also feel jittery, making you want to eat or snack more because of that jittery feeling. Drinking more than one cup of coffee would only make someone jittery, that's all. If you're sensitive to it, of course. But caffeine also raises cortisol levels in your body, which is not good either for fasting. To refresh your memory, cortisol is body stress hormone. An increase in the cortisol during fasting may set off a chain reaction of hormones that leads to increase in your blood glucose, which is what we don't want to happen, right? One of the most important advantages of fasting is that it allows you to keep your blood sugar and insulin levels low and drinking too much caffeine can be counterproductive for this goal. Now, number 10 in the list is a steaming cup of tea. If you are fasting, you can drink tea as long as it is brewed with tea bags, leaves, or flakes rather than an instant tea, which contains you know, a lot of calories and you have to make it taste better, etc. And the bottled iced tea is frequently overly sweetened, so stay away from that. If you have to, just choose the unsweet ones, right? Adding honey, milk, or cream to your coffee or tea should only be done after you're done with fasting. It's not a big deal to use stevia or monk fruit as a sweetener though if you have to have the sweetness. But Splenda or Sweet and Low, not so much. Because tea contains less caffeine than the coffee, you can drink a little more of it while fasting. However, I believe it is still best to limit your intake of caffeinated beverages as much as possible. Number three, what about a glass of water? Well, you don't need to limit your drinking unless you have a low sodium level in your blood, some people do, but drinking water while fasting is generally a good idea because it keeps you hydrated, fills your stomach, and keeps your hunger at bay. However, there are some exceptions. Because bottled water, for example, has already been thoroughly cleaned and stripped of its nutrients, adding electrolytes to plain water may actually help you stay hydrated for a longer period of time. You could instead drink mineral water, a splash of lemon or lime juice can be okay, a few fruit slices or even another juice, like a tablespoon, can improve the flavor of that water. As long as the amount of the juice is through splash rather than a pour, okay? Approximately, that would be like one tablespoon for 12 pounds of water. Carbonated water or seltzer can be thought as pretty much the same way as a regular water most of the time, as long as it is not artificially flavored and has no calories. How about apple cider vinegar? Because apple cider vinegar contains only a trace of carbohydrates, it is unlikely to really disrupt your fast. It may also make you feel fuller while keeping your blood sugar stable. When it comes to apple cider vinegar, less is more in terms of how much you consume though. To get the best results, just use one to two tablespoons in a bottle of water. You can also make the bottle of water uh, tasty by adding some lime juice, etc., to make it uh, taste a little bit better. So then, which liquids you should really be avoiding during the keto and intermittent fasting plan? Now, first one is the milk. Milk is in the, you know, some people say it's in the gray area. There's quite a bit of disagreement about it, whether it should be consumed during a fast or not. But the answer is largely determined by how much and what type of milk you consume. If you do like a splash of milk to your morning coffee or tea, it may not be horrible. This should be low in calories and carbohydrates, so you can at least fast all day. But to begin, you may find a splash of milk kind of helps to alleviate the hunger if it is a high-fat milk. A cup of coffee with milk will not interrupt your fast, as we discussed, uh, but dairy products that contain a lot of sugar and carbs, it can add up to your calories. That includes your milk. For example, a milk has 100 calories per cup, 12 grams of carbohydrates. It makes no difference that milk contains protein or fat as long as it has carbohydrates in it, right? Like I said, a splash of milk in your coffee in the morning may not break it totally, but you have to be careful about the carbohydrates. Now, how about the bone broth? Well, hold on there. If you enjoy drinking bone broth in a warm mug, you should wait until your fast is over, my friend. Bone broth is very high in protein, which is great. It's popular among people following the paleo diet or even keto diet. 
But like we discussed in previous videos, how protein actually can raise your blood sugar as well, although it's much lower rate than carbohydrates, but it can definitely still increase your insulin levels, which is not what we want in a fasting state. But if you're not fasting and you're on a ketogenic diet, I would still keep an eye on your total protein intake while drinking this drink because ketogenic diet still calls for 80% fat and adding too much protein in your diet may not be the best. Now, number three drink that you should be avoiding is coconut water. Although coconut water has a lot of health benefits, it's not best liquid to drink while fasting. Now, coconut water is more than just water. It contains carbohydrates, as we know, but it has a lot of electrolytes as well. However, the carbs are broken down quickly. So if you're drinking or enjoying the coconut water, you should do so when you're breaking your fast. It is definitely unquestionably preferable to soda or your juice. Now, alcohol is totally harmful to your health. We don't want to even talk about that, but I'm going to talk about it. Not to consume alcohol at all. If you're going to have a drink now and then, it is best to avoid doing so when you're fasting, so alcohol and fasting does not go together. Why? Because it's high in calories. Also, it begins to dehydrate you and even raise your blood sugar levels as soon as it enters your body. Now, a small amount of alcohol at dinner can actually help your blood sugar control by lowering the glucose produced from your liver. This is true as long as you limit yourself to one or two drinks at dinner and stay hydrated without adding extra juice or sugars in a cocktail or something like that. You cannot drink alcohol while fasting because it won't help you get the benefits from your fast. Number five drink that you should not be touching is a fruit juice. That's a definite no-no. And uh, here's a quick reminder of what you should be doing. When you eat a piece of fruit, you get the fiber as well as the juice from it. You can also consume fruit juice, but the juice contains no fiber, which is absorbed very quickly and definitely destroys your fasting immediately. Even when you're not fasting in between the fast, when you're eating, you should be preferring the fruit over fruit juice. Number six is soda. Well, that's a no brainer. We're gonna avoid that. Nutritional value is close to nothing. They're always high in calories and sugar or the sweeteners that are not good for you. As we discussed before, studies show that consuming too many artificial sweeteners found in sodas and stuff can cause you actually to crave and want more food and it can lead to weight gain, even if there's no calories in them. Although they call them sugar-free drink, etc., research shows that the popular soda ingredients such as sucralose or acosulfame, etc., they raise insulin levels in the body. It can make you crave sweets in addition to removing the effects of fasting. Now, many studies also show that drinking diet soda can cause weight gain, even if you don't consume any extra calories while drinking it. Another thing that may be bad is your gut health. The flora from diet soda, the gastric flora is affected and bad bacteria takes over your entire gut. So. Guys, these are drinks you should and should not be drinking if you are trying to achieve a successful intermittent fasting regimen. I hope you liked this video. If you did, give a thumbs up, share and like, and subscribe. See you in the next video. Hey guys, I hope you're enjoying this channel so far and I hope you subscribed already. If you didn't, do it. And if you did, watch this video right there. I think that will help you too.